All eyes were on whether Japan would issue a message of apology for colonizing Korea in the past and if the two leaders would address the issue of Japan's plan to release radioactive water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. For an in-depth look at today's summit between Seoul and Tokyo and how it was different from the one in March, we have our foreign affairs correspondent Pei Eunji here in the studio with us. Welcome, Eunji. Good evening. So, Eunji, the summit between President Yoon and Prime Minister Kishida just ended a few hours ago. And back in March, when President Yoon visited Tokyo, the summit ended with, without um, Japan's apology on wartime forced labor victims and colonizing Korea. So, there was some hope here in Korea that Japan would finally make a long awaited apology. So, was there any message of apology from Prime Minister Kishida? Well, unfortunately, the message that Japan's Prime Minister Kishida gave on forced labor victims was not that much different from the one he gave in March, as he still avoided using the word apology. But for the first time, he said his heart aches for those who had to work in difficult conditions, apparently referring to Korean victims subjected to wartime forced labor. This is what he said during a joint press briefing following the summit. Like I said when President Yoon visited Tokyo in March, our government's stance remains and will continue to remain that we uphold the historical recognition made by previous cabinets, including the joint declaration made in October 1998. My heart aches for those who had to work under difficult conditions at the time. In March, he also said his government would continue to uphold the stance made by previous cabinets, including the joint declaration between the two countries' former leaders, made in 1998, without using the word apology. The joint statement between former South Korean President Kim Dae-jung and former Japanese Prime Minister Keizo Obuchi includes Tokyo's deep remorse and heartfelt apology for causing tremendous damage and suffering to Koreans during its colonial rule. Right. And Eunji, what did President Yoon say about these historical disputes? Well, President Yoon said we need to let go of the past and that it's more important to move forward and find ways to enhance cooperation. Let's take a listen. Since President Yoon took office in May last year, his administration has been pushing to mend ties with Japan and has been saying that Seoul and Tokyo must leave their past behind. Seeking to improve relations, the South Korean government in March laid out plans to solve the long-standing dispute over compensation for the people subjected by Japan to forced labor through funds secured by Korean companies instead of the accused Japanese firms. The victims and supporting civic groups protested, saying this issue cannot be resolved without sincere apologies and participation by the Japanese companies that are responsible. But President Yoon today stressed that the government is not willing to change its plan on this issue. Right, Eunji, and moving on to another sensitive issue, Fukushima wastewater release. So earlier this year, uh, Japan announced that it would discharge more than a million tons of wastewater from Fukushima nuclear power plant, right? That's right. Um, addressing the concern, the two leaders said they have agreed to allow South Korean experts to visit Japan to conduct an on-site safety inspection on the planned release of radioactive water from the Fukushima nuclear power plant. Announcing the plan, President Yoon added that he hopes this becomes a meaningful step in line with many South Koreans' demand for a science-based inspection. He also noted that Kishida has vowed to work on alleviating Koreans' concerns about health and safety regarding the issue. Kishida also said Japan is aware that there are a lot of concerns in South Korea on this matter. He also stressed that as the Prime Minister of Japan, he would not let his country release water in a way that may damage South Koreans' health or the environment. His remarks come after South Korea and other neighboring countries have voiced concern, even after the International Atomic Energy Agency has said Japan's proposal is safe. Right, and we'll have to see whether the today's summit will help bolster the bilateral ties. Thank you for the wrap-up, Lindsay. We really appreciate it. Thank you.